Okay. I wonder where Steve is. So Steve has an appointment. I'll, t I'll tell you. Let me uh, let me just get on. I got the devices set up here. I think we're good. So yeah, our friend Steve Kelly had to um, drive drive Joey to an appointment, and so he said there's no you know it's so hard to find parking that he thought he would probably miss. Though I did give him this number in case he can phone in from the car. And, oh, um, yeah. Well, good. Our friend. Has he come up here yet? Um, or is he still no, he's coming early August, Connie. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Rosemary. Hi, Father Matt. We have someone joining us too, Connie, uh, Rosemary, and she's a summer prisoner, but she's up in the city now, right now, but she's joining us on Zoom, which is great. And we have some people oh, joining us. We have all our machines going at once. I have Connie on a speakerphone, Rosemary, because she, oh, she, does, she doesn't work the computer, but she works the speakerphone with us. Okay, good. And so let me just go over the um, lessons again. Um, to, we're going to have the lessons for this Sunday, which is the seventh Sunday after Pentecost on July 19th. And we're going to have uh, the epistle is Romans chapter 8, 12 through 25, yeah, Romans 8, 12 through 25, and then the, the psalm is Psalm 86, verses 11 through 17, uh, if you have a book of common prayer, that's on page 710, and then our, the gospel is Matthew, it's broken up, and we're going to see why, we like to see Connie, especially, and Steve, like, enjoy looking at what what, why they left out the verses they did. But it's Matthew 13, 24 through 30, and then 36 through 43. And so... Yes, yes, so it's Matthew 13, 24. I, I sent it out on Facebook, but I don't... I should figure out how to send it out on Zoom, too, you know? You know, like, maybe next week I'll... I'll, I'll when, I, when we send out our email blast on Friday, or Saturday, I'll include the Bible study readings for the following week. I think that'd be a good thing to do. Right and, now, I'm overloaded. Yes, yeah. So, but just just relax and um, follow along. There's not, there's no worries, nothing to do, um, but just to participate. So, it's good to have Rosemary um, join us too from up towards the Boston area. And then we have maybe Lillian's on at home. I don't know. Those that are um, watching. Um, like Rosemary, this is, I'm up in the attic, Rosemary, the lighting might, might be kind of funny, um, but I'm up in, this is where we have prayers from the attic. Oh, um, like hydrangeas. Yeah, the, the nice hydrangeas, aren't they? We have, we have hydrangeas up here, Connie, for the memorial garden, um, and they're just brilliant pinks and purples. And I wish I was on Nantucket now, not here. I feel trapped. I know, but, well, we're glad we're connecting as much as we can, and it'll get... This, uh, this part will get easier and then we can, before you know it, things will be behind us and we'll be able to move forward. So let me see. Why don't I, um, Connie's going to um, pray the psalm for us, but, and so Rosemary, unless, unless you want to read Rosemary, I could read the epistle, but you're welcome to read that if you'd like, which is Romans. I don't have any prayer books with me except computers around me. Okay, good. So yeah, so we have, I'm going to. I'll, I'll, remind, I'll remember to mail you a prayer book, a Book of Common Prayer. Do you have one at home in general, prayer book? Rosemary? I have a Bible. Okay, I'll send you a prayer book too. Okay, so we'll start with Romans chapter 8, and um, we'll go from there. Let me see. I've got all my books around up here. The lighting's a little bit bright, but I can't, um, I don't have any shades behind me, so it's, uh, you know, it's be, the light is behind me too much. I know. Yeah, but that's and okay. And you're still wet. Yeah, let me see. I can put one light on in front of me. That doesn't help too much. But. Okay, so Romans chapter 8. Next week's readings from Romans 8 are some of my favorite readings, just to spoiler alert. The, the ones not for this Sunday, but the following Sunday are the ones where it, it says, um, um, nothing can separate us from the love of God. That's a, such a wonderful 
statement. I love that. That's yeah. what I have at Tom's funeral. Yes, really. That's what I was going to say. That's one of the choices for our funerals, memorial services. Is that is that that's it's such a good reminder. Okay, so this is a the, the um, earlier in the chapter. This is twelve, Romans chapter eight, twelve through twenty-five. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. If, if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if, if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you do not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the suffering of this present age are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, and hoped that the creation itself would be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God we know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. Not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly when we wait for adoption, redemption of our bodies, for in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So that's a long one. My, my verge is going to have to have a drink of water by Curtis because it's a pretty long epistle. That's a nice nice one. Yes, yeah, a beautiful, yeah. the whole Im image Good of... It. Go ahead, Connie. Yeah, I was, I was just going to say there's one place there where he, he does that thing where he's gets all complicated. <laughs> yes, uh, Paul likes to do that. Um, yeah, he does. Talks he in does. circles. But I always think when I read those things in Romans that Paul knew who he was preaching to. The Romans, they, um, they like things to be complicated. Sometimes. Yes, <laughs> yeah. You like that. Philosophy. Philosophers like things to be complicated. Yeah. I know. I love the, the I love Paul's trick where he do it's a, it's a technique from the ancient world where you say you go to lesser things to higher things. Like it says, you know, if God cares so much about the grass of the fields, you know, which is alive one day and then thrown into the oven, if God cares so much, much about birds that they're you know God takes care of them and feeds that feed, feeds them, doesn't God so much more so care about us? It's like go. Like, yeah, like for yeah. lesser to to greater things. Um, yeah. So yeah, this is a and often we um you know I think this is maybe for our burial services we might begin with chapter uh, with verse eighteen even I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy compared with the glory about to be revealed to us. I love I love the image of um, creation, uh, birthing you know the labor pains that you know. I know it's easy to think that God's work is done, God's creation is done, but God continues to create. And again, I, I have more confidence in certainly the possibilities of, um, of uh, let, me move, let me move on this other side, maybe this will be better lighting, of, of environmental renewal, because I see myself in Rhode Island, once they started really enforcing environmental rules, um, the waters got cleaner and cleaner. They test them, you know, the University of Rhode Island tests them. And the waters just got cleaner and cleaner. Um, and so let me see. I'm trying to move things around so I'm not all, all glare. OK. 
Okay. Oops. Oops, hold on everybody. Okay, that wasn't a good one. Hope you didn't break anything. Didn't break anything, but I spilled a lot of water. <laughs> okay, so, okay everybody, so we're back. Yeah, so Romans 8, yeah, so we have things kind of tight up here for the cameras, you know, and sometimes yes. it backfires on us with um, spilling. Okay, good. So, uh, a, one thing I don't like so much because, oh, sorry, Rosemary, let me fix the screen. One, because Jesus was emotional, you know, um, didn't, um, things. Usually I'm over for this Rosemary um, and uh, Connie, we're usually in the vestry room, but last week the, the reception was so bad it kept cutting off, and so then we switched, to, I had to switch back to the attic where we have these evening prayers up here on Facebook. Yeah. And so the, I get, I, I, I still get some st static though. Oh, you do up here? Yeah. yeah. Is, it, is it worse than the other phone? Over in the parish house? Yeah, I think so. Oh, sorry about that. I don't understand That's that. That's all right. I see it, you know, we, we have to try everything. I think we have bad water for one thing, even though the foreman was here yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Have you, have you ever ha heard of the Little Rock um, Bible Bible series? That was the one I was working with. Um, they gave me a little booklets. Don't think I have heard. Yeah, I don't think I've heard. Choose. Have not heard a Little Rock Bible series. Is it? Yeah, it does. For many years, I was where I have piles, and, and uh, each year they decide which uh, book from the Bible they want to discuss, and then and they have all question and answer questions, and then they discuss it. And really nice, well, nicely formatted. I joined last last night. I had a I was on a Zoom meeting. I try I tried to talk to people about joining, but uh, did, I don't think I had much success. Um, but we'll have they'll have it's it's based on the letters from Birmingham Jail. You have to have a computer, of course, to or be on Zoom with a smartphone. Um, but it was and I couldn't get on with my laptop, but I was able to get on with my phone. And it was um, they had a discussion group. You know the. You, you, was supposed to read the letter, which I did. Um, letter from Birmingham Jail, Martin Luther King Jr. You know when he was in Birmingham, and bishops and pastors, you know, uh, resisted desire to coming in. They thought it was causing trouble, and he said, "How long do we have to justice?" And that well-meaning, well-meaning liberal white people, often were too moderate on this about the subject. It was 1963. He wrote the letter. He was kind of critical. Uh, President Kennedy said, oh, we need to wait and kind of work on things. And he said, we've been oppressed for 350 years, you know, and, um, and now it's been 400 since slavery was introduced into the country, and we can't wait. So yeah, they've been waiting. Yeah, they've been waiting. Yeah. So anyways, and that was, um, it was a very powerful series. It took, um, let me know if you want to join Rosemary um, and anyone else out there. In I don't know if anyone's on with us today after last week's fiasco, but I'm hoping that they are. Um, last week it kept Thank cutting you off, you know, kept cutting off. Anyways, um, they have three more evenings. It's Wednesdays from 6 to 7.30 on Zoom. And I put the information out a couple weeks ago on our, on our parish website, you know, our, our um, updates that we send out on weekends. So anyways, I digress, but that was very good about, um, you know, we don't, we don't fall back into slavery. We still enslave each other sometimes with our attitude each other, um, our expectations or whatever we project onto people. We can enslave people still and enslave ourselves and people can enslave us. Oh, but what I was going to say, I don't like Paul's contrast of the, the things of the body are 
dirty kind of cause again because God came to us in in Jesus in physical and um, so certainly we, we want to deny the, the sins of the flesh but not deny our that we are embodied uh, beloved people of God and the Holy Spirit is embodied in us um, and uh, Christ lives on us I just had a baptism I came from a baptism um, just, uh, it was, I had, I wore my mask. It was just, uh, uh, six of us in the church, including the, the child was, um, a little less than two years old, but, um, it was really, um, it reminded us, you know, we talked then about that even at that young age that he's being born again and he receives the spirit of adoption, you know, to, um, you know, bathe, out, outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Um, uh, and I, you know, I, we have that wonderful olive oil that I use. Um, Dr. Koreshi's wife, Laura, has an olive oil business. And the trees are from Turkey, 400-year-old olive oil trees. And she's, um, when I told her, I said, well, I haven't been, I read bad things about some of the Italian oil, no offense to, all, I'm sure there's great ones. I don't know which brands were, but um, you know, they, they, were, they had additives in them that weren't olive oil. And so I, I was buying organic California olive oil. And so Laura said, well, that's, that's fine and good, but those trees are 15 years old, and my trees in Turkey are 400 years old. It makes, <laughs> and that makes a difference with olives and olive oil. You know, it's, it's amazing how long lives some of our... I think they use... An, I think maybe that they use oil for anointing too. Um, the the is. Islamic people, I believe, use some oil for anointing. Of course, right. everyone knows the story. When I had the bishop, the bishop blessed the oil, and um, I was holding the, the, you know, like an orb. I was holding the the, the uh, cruet. You know, it was a nice round, old-fashioned cruet uh, filled with oil, and it was so. This was last June when the bishop came. It was, it was so electrifying. I really felt the power of the Spirit. It was electrifying to hold that and get in. I didn't expect that. We had no table that was the right height for the bishop, you know, to have it in front of the bishop for the blessing. So, so that was very powerful. I love using them. Um, remember, I, when I was down in Delaware, when I was first the, since the early 2000s, I moved there in 2001, and I went to the cathedral for the blessing of the oils, which is usually... Tuesday of Holy Week, right? Tuesday before Easter, the priests renew our our priestly vows, and then and the bishop blesses oil for healing and oil for baptism. Two two separate big you know glass uh, pitchers of oil usually. And so, anyways, I, I went in the sacristy before the service and to put my vestments there and realized that they were using Wesson oil, and no offense to Wesson, I'm sure Wesson is a fine oil. And so all my years in Delaware after that, I, uh, from the Italian market in Philadelphia, I, I ordered, I forget, De Bruno Brothers, I think it's called. Yes, De Bruno Brothers. I ordered a great big can of extra virgin olive oil, two, two cans, two different oils, so that they could use real good oil. Because we're using it to anoint the sick and using it for baptism. Don't we want, don't we want good oil, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, Steve. Oh, Steve's on too. Great. Hi, Steve, Steve Kelly is on. I was just making a cameo appearance for a few minutes. Okay, great. <laughs> Good. Welcome. Yeah, so we were just talking about Romans 8, but Connie's ready to go to the psalm. And then, Steve, uh, maybe you want to, if you're still on, the gospel is going to be Matthew 13, 24 through 30. I know I set this out yesterday. And then 36 through 43. So we have to look at. 31 through 35 and see why they left it out. And so that's Matthew 13, 24 through 30, 36 through 43. And then we just had Romans 8. And that was a beautiful reading. Um, I was saying I love that, that chapter anyways. But this one's about, um, you know, living, living according to the spirit rather than the flesh. So there's some of that dichotomy of flesh and spirit, which I'm not crazy about because we're incarnational people. Um, but and those are led by the Spirit. And of course, capital S in, my, in a lot of our Bibles representing the Holy Spirit. Our children of God. 
You don't receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but have received the spirit of adoption. And so that's a beautiful, um, again, it's kind of, it can be a fearful time and we can really become slaves to fear. I know, I just had a baptism and the man was from Prince Edward Island was his, his family. He was born there, and wonderful local man, lived here for some, many years, but, and he said that they shut down the island up there, but, so they've had no virus on Prince Edward Island, Canada. It's a small island, so it reminds me always, I went up there years ago, it reminded me of Cape Cod, you know, way out in Cape Cod. Uh, maybe yeah, it's nice, yeah. National it's Seashore kind of, yeah, it's beautiful. But he said they're still very fearful, and we, we are because we don't, yeah, we don't, we just don't know, you know, life's fearful enough any, anyways, so, but we don't become slaves to um, fear, and then we cry, Abba, Father, I love that, Abba, Father. Mm -hmm. yeah. Always powerful, when, you know, get one of the most powerful parts of the service, whether it's morning prayer or um, Eucharist or evening prayer, whatever it is, at the service today we'll pray at a, I just had um, baptism, but I have a burial at 3.30 at the, I don't know the family, but coming down, you know, family from Vermont and Nantucket, and we're burying his ashes out of, up at Prospect Hill. We'll pray the Our Father. But that's always crying, you know, Abba, Father, praying that together. When it's a church full of people, voices even kind of jump out at me. Certain, I hear different voices each week when we're praying that together. So I love, it's a beautiful image too. Beautiful, um, and so again, I love this. Um, I was going to read this. We, I have in the background the flag of Rhode Island, even because it has hope with the anchor, you know, and the banner. So I used that from the other night from when we talked about hope for our evening service. I think it was on Tuesdays. And it, this and this would have been an appropriate reading too. It says, it "says For in hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for the seen?" But we, if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. So I think it's a good reminder not to be slaves to the physical world too, but to be to be transcended. Hi, Meatball's back. Meatball's here. Hey, Meatball. Yeah, good boy. Good boy, Mr. Ball. You're outside. Here's my dog, Meatball. I don't know if you can see him. He's, he's too low, but <laughs> he's up for the Bible. So he comes up to the attic sometimes. Okay, good. So we continue now with um, Kindness That Will Lead Us in the Psalm, which in the prayer book okay. is on page 710 of the prayer book, or if you're using your Bible, it's, it'll be a little bit different words. Psalm 86, verses 11 through 17. So we can see, you know, we can see why they don't use the rest of it, but let's find out. But 11 through 17, and then... I'll kind of pray up to the asterisk, and then we'll um, complete the verse. Let me find the page too, Connie. Yep, That's 610. Yep. 610 it is, and no, wait a page 710, and we start at verse 11. So I have my Bible, so I'll just follow along. Okay, very good. I'm just listening. Okay. okay. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Knit my heart to you, that I may fear your name. I will thank you, O Lord, my God, with all my heart. And glorify your name forever more. For great is your love towards me. You have delivered me from the nethermost pit. The arrogant rise up against me. O oh God, and a band of violent men seeks my life. They have not set you before their eyes. But you, O oh Lord, are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger. And slow to anger, anger and full of kindness and truth. Turn to me and have mercy upon me. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a sign of your favor, so that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed. Because you, O Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
Hallelujah. So. Well, that's a lovely song. Oh, okay. so, yeah. so many verses that we're, we're so familiar with. Yes, this was our song. You know, when I was, uh, when I worked for... Compassion and slow to anger. Yes, that's, a, that's such a good, um, a good thing to say. Right? God is full of compassion and slow to anger. You know, this whole psalm is beautiful, Psalm 86. They didn't cut out the first part to, um, because any of it is uh, troublesome, like so, so often it is. But I, this is one, remember I told you when I was in the wine business um, and walked the streets, first in Manhattan, and then uh, Nantucket in Boston, I used to, have to wait a lot for the buyers um, to deal with the salesman before me. I used to say, uh, I used to wait, have to wait till the other weasels get out of the way. And uh, <laughs> sorry about that guy, a little arrogant. But, um, and so then I would, um, so I, I wrote down these psalms. Once I, it was 1986 that I found the Episcopal Church. And I wrote these psalms out. Um, and I guess it was maybe the, 19, the end of 1985, I started to go to Trinity Church in Copley Square in Boston. End of 1985. Then I met Ollie in March of 1986. She came with me on my, our second date was to church. We had dinner on Friday night in Brookline Village and then a nice fish, seafood, you know, seafood restaurant, open kitchen, uh, one of my wine customers. And then she came to church with me that Sunday. Um, and. But this is one, bow down your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and in misery. We don't have the beginning of that this week. You know, keep watch over my life, for I am faithful. Save your servant who puts his trust in you. It's a beautiful image of, of, uh, you know, of God. You know, we know that God is around us and not far away up in the mountaintop, but kind of God bowing down to us and, 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 and helping us in our in our misery and life is both that, that fourth uh, that fourth verse gladden the soul of your servant for yeah. to you O Lord I lift up my soul I think a lot of us need gladdening yes, um, yes. I wish they had done the whole thing as the repeating because I think the first part is so beautiful too I know maybe I should do, I could just add that you know as um <laughs> hold on I have to put my t-shirt down <laughs> As a naughty Protestant, I can do whatever I want on Sunday. So maybe I tell the virtual, add the whole, add the whole psalm. It might be a, a meatball went right back downstairs, but he'll be back up. We'll see. Do a meatball. So I'm whatever meatball makes his appearance during lecture area, I always think of it. There's a, one of the commentators on CNN. He has a huge Great Dane. And <laughs> sometimes the Great Dane walks through the kitchen where he's giving his co comments to. Oh. <laughs> it's so funny. I don't know if you've seen it. The side of it. I've given up. I've given up watching all television movies. Oh, you have? Oh, you're fasting? Fasting television? No, I just, it's just, it happened a couple of years ago. I spent the summer on that bucket, and I was happy because I just didn't watch TV, and I didn't, particularly didn't watch TV news. And I just started doing it a couple of years ago. And I, I still know what's going on. I, I, I just don't have to. You can always read things. I mean, I'm, yes, I'm, exactly. reading Bol I'm reading John Bolton's book now, which is just fascinating. But I stopped watching the news once and then, like a years ago, many years ago. And uh, it was when my husband was working with Baker a lot, David Halberstam, all, 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 all those people here in Nantucket, and we went to a dinner party at Russell Baker's house, and everyone was talking about Watergate. Well, I've been up here for six weeks, I hadn't watched anything, and I didn't know what they were talking about. <laughs> so now I just always listen to the news. Yeah, your head, head in the sand. I object to it. It's the, the constant... It's, it's no longer news. It's just like a editorial, either a conservative editorial or a liberal editorial. Yeah, I know. Four hours a day, and I'm just sick of it. I know. I can't stand well, it. We have the right not I'm to be. The hall. Like I, I, I just can't help it. I've always have been. And, uh... Yeah. When I when I was um, when I was at university, I you know some people consider the New York Times 
controversial, but I, this is not a political statement at all, but because one of my political science classes, part of our work was to get the New York Times every day. You know, we got a subscription to the New York Times. My mom always got the Sunday Times because she did, she did the crossword puzzle and she, you know, which I was, so I was able to read the magazine section, parts of it I really liked. But, but I, have to, I have to say, when I took those political science classes and had the morning, and you, you know, I sat in the student union um, and with my, you know, coffee or tea and read the newspaper, um, and it, it, it didn't seem objective to me. These were world-class writers that were traveling around the world. We used to have a lot more, like, in, you know, pe people that would actually go to those regions and, and report. We uh, you know, mm -hmm. met a lot of newspapers and um, uh, yeah. newspapers. Can't do that anymore. Cover to cover, but I just can't. I just can't do the recycling of that anymore. It's just this, um, well, I think the only reason I don't Can you hear the phone online? Unabashedly prejudiced to its own point of view. It's absolutely no longer um, uh, unbiased in any sense of the word, but they have some pretty good recipes from time to time. So that, that, that's their redeeming feature recipe. Okay. Well, they have some good articles, too. I always stop no, and read no, the no, first no. page when I'm, when I'm at the I'm at this stop and shop. I always. Okay, I also like the book review on Sunday. Okay, back to the Bible and the sentence. <laughs> Good idea. I hope you can Good idea. get all these devices going at once so people can hear. <laughs> and so anyways, as, as you know, Ali and I are on every night with Prayers from the Attic, and we notice, um, now we take, we're taking um, Saturday and Sunday night off, but we know, we've always noticed how the, the psalm writer, you know, because David wrote some of the early psalms, but then there's other psalm writers, um, over the you know the generations after that, it's always about um, people are out to get them. You know, it's like the the arrogant are rising up against me, and band of violent men seeking after my life, and it's just um, people being um, hate me, hating me. Let the people that hate me be ashamed. It's just sad that the uh, but and again it speaks to our uh, these psalms are kind of like a roller coaster ride again. Of, Lord, how, how can you abandon me? Oh, w wait a minute. You've been with me the whole time. Oh, but wait a minute. I'm abandoned again. You know, it's like up, up and down roller coaster ride in the Psalms. And I guess that's our human nature, our experience of God and of, uh, of the stuff of life uh, can kind of uh, feel like that. You know, that sometimes a lot of people have felt abandoned when not well and during pandemics, during you know, hard economic times, whatever, whatever pushes people's buttons. And plenty of, we've all had plenty of loss in our lives too. Um, and then also, um, it's beautiful to know God's presence in our lives, know community, uh, that people care about us. Um, it gladdens the soul of our servants as, Lord, lift, I lift up my soul. And so I love that image too. Last night we had, in our prayers, about like the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Remember in my in my um, Zoom conference last night on the letters from Birmingham Jail, Bishop Curry talked about the Spirit pouring over us. You know, it's just like my baptism again. I had a baptism of safely distanced, and, and then I had my mask, my bandana mask on. A little, I guess he was twenty one months. They said, uh, Bo. I'll post a picture. Twenty one months. They, they, yeah, twenty one months. He was a, he was running all over the church. I couldn't. I don't know how to turn on the pipe organ. I, Joe showed me once, but he, he really wanted to, he was sitting at the Pope pipe organ and wanted to play. Max and uh, Connie, I, uh, I have to go. Please. Okay, please Steve, please nice please. talking with you. Right, Steve called okay, in from, from the car. Okay, good. So, um, yeah, so we have the Romans 8 reading. This, how does this connect to this? Um, again, the Lord, Connie, you've always liked the image of, I think you've talked about it before, walking in, in the truth. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Is an interesting oh, expression, that. isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. And again, I think during hard times, is it, it, this, the Psalms talk about the wondrous things that God has done that we remember. To remember those wondrous things, right? In the Jewish tradition, you know, at uh, 
Passover time, or you'd, you'd recite the things that in the history of, of Israel, deliverance from, you know, out of slavery to the waters of the Red Sea, um, those kind of images, just, you know, even if they're um, mythological in the best sense of the word, that they speak, speak truth about God's delivering us, and it's important to remember to relate those times. At least, at least we pause, most of us pause for prayers before meals. That's what, uh, certainly we always take time to do that. We know that God uh, doesn't hold back food from others, but every, and provides it only for us or whatever, but God as a source is pro providential, the source of all providence. Um, so, yeah, so that's a sweet, uh, nothing obnoxious about that psalm that I can see. Um, and Which one? The Psalm 86. It's a, it's a beautiful psalm from... Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Again, sometimes it's imagery that's horrific, and so that, that's why they leave it out. But this is, I guess, they just want to shorten it. Yeah. Yeah. So I love the idea of God keeping watch over our lives, too, from earlier on in the psalm. Okay, so good. So let me see. I'll read the gospel now. Again, our this the gospel one. is it's Ma Matthew what? It's Matthew thirteen, twenty four through thirty. Oh, Matthew thirteen. Yeah, and then then thirty six through forty three. Yeah, thirteen twenty four through thirty, and then through thirty through thirty, and then thirty six through forty three. Yes, yeah, so sorry for the confusion of. We're in the attic today too. Those that are dialed in on Facebook, because um, we had a terrible reception last week over at the vestry room. We need some boosters over there, some pods. We had the guy from Infinity came, the telephone guy, and talked about getting us some. We need to get some pods to. So thirteen, twenty-four through thirty. Okay, and then 36. Here we go. It's a reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. At harvest time, I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Let me skip some. And then Jesus left the crowds and went into the house. His disciples approached him saying, explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. Jesus answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evil doers. They will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. That anyone with ears, listen. The word of the Lord. Uh, That's a hard one, huh? Yeah. That's harsh. I always, you know, there's certain lines in the Bible so... that my father was just part of his speech. <laughs> And one of them was when my sister and I were unhappy, he'd say, I don't want any weeping and gnashing of teeth. 
We think and actually that's great. It's a great old fashioned thing. Did you hear that? Yeah. Connie's father used to tell them they don't need weeping and gnashing of teeth when her and her sister are going at it. That's cute. Yeah. yeah, I never liked the gnashing of teeth stuff and being like kicked out of the. Yeah, you know, it seems something like something Jesus wouldn't say, doesn't it? Right. Yeah, it's right. pretty harsh. <laughs> um, again, as a boy, I always assumed that I wouldn't be good enough. You know, I didn't grow up in an Episcopal church and I don't want to criticize any other church. I've been criticized for, for, because people know my background, that I would be critical. But again, I would, when I was a boy, it seemed like you, you could never be good enough. You know, you could never, unless you um, sacrificed your life and became a priest and didn't do, you know, was whatever, didn't live by the flesh like this, um, like the Romans 8 passage we just read kind of contrasting the life of the spirit and life of the flesh. And again, those are infused, it seems to me, a, a good life. I love them. What is it? Um, okay. Ecclesiasticus, where it says, what does God want of, of humankind but that we would enjoy the fruits of our labor um, mm -hmm. and, uh, fi and find joy, you know, and, and the, those, the things of life too. Not wait for just the joys of, uh, of heaven. So this image of the angels collecting the weeds, and then... Yes, I love that, the angel with the weeds. Yeah. But I wonder why they left out um, 31, uh, you know, the... Yeah, 31 to 35, seed. somebody see. Yeah. Oh, the mustard seed one. So maybe yeah. they'll have that another Sunday. Let me see, because that's a good reminder. Yeah, they probably, it's another Sunday. Yeah, the parable in the middle of the Gospels that's left out, because they chopped this one up. Um, yeah, that's true. Is, um, and then also, I always love what, the other thing they left out. The kingdom of heaven is like is like the yeast. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's wonderful. Kingdom of heaven is but like the yeast. a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all that was leavened. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I love these parables. It talks about maybe they're coming up in the future Sundays. Treasure hidden in the field, right? And someone found and hid. They, they buy the field, which sounds like it's a, I don't know, a, a scam almost, right? I'm not going to tell you if there's a treasure in your, on your property. I'm going to buy your property and have that treasure. I'll have to look at that one. Oh, the fine pearls. Like a merchant in search of fine pearls. Finding one pearl of great value and sold all that he had and bought it. When I was in, I lived in New York City. I went with a friend of mine who's a jeweler to a pearl down on the, you know Diamond Row when they were the Hasidic Jewish jewelry shops and everything. And so I went to a pearl dealer, and it's amazing when you look at pearls, just like anything, you know, compared to other pearls, you can see such a difference of, you know, the the, the coating, you know, the outer shell, the different colors and textures. Yes, but some are, some are really slightly pink and some are r really slightly blue. I love that. Yeah, pearls, they're fascinating. Aren't they? I love pearls. I'm, yeah. It seems almost like a primitive thing to wear, you know, like um, something that probably early cave people wore, shells and th things. I still like wearing sh those kind of simple things. Puka, puka shell bracelets, you know, like you, you wear those at the be in beaches. Okay, good. So that's interesting. One interesting passage about parables. Again, as we talked about, what did we have for our parable the other day? How quickly we forget. Oh, it was it was about oh, throwing was the seed on the on rocky ground, right? The, the seeds that. Yeah, good soil. Yeah. You know, good soil, rocky soil, things like that. Yeah. You know. And then, and then on Sunday you spoke about the. The seeds that had fallen onto Fair Street and, oh no, um, the petunias that had receded. Oh, yes, that's right, exactly. <laughs> Thanks, Connie, for reminding me. Remember, those that didn't turn in on Sunday, you heard on Rosemary on Sunday, that the Unitarian parsonage next door, for some reason, they have some artificial flowers. There's one in their backyard where her, Linda's husband, Gary, said the bees were even fooled by it. It's a brilliant crazy color thing. Looks it's like something awesome. from Hawaii, you know. And then in their in their window boxes out in front of their house, they have like psychedelic colored plastic flowers. But underneath mm -hmm. them now in the springtime, 
I'll have, to, I'll have to post a better a picture of that. I'll do that when I get off today. I'll have to send you. <laughs> Connie sees it because she lives in the neighborhood. All these petunias, wave petunias, growing out of the cracks of the sidewalks it's, and out of the foundation of the house. So I joke that the plastic, it's a miracle that the plastic flowers reproduced, uh, reproduced <laughs> on the sidewalk below. Again, amid all of creation. And again, we talked about fear. You know, the psalm mentioned fear of the Lord. But the translation, the proper translation from the Hebrew is to be in awe of the Lord, right? To be in awe of God, right? And the Lord in this case is Yahweh, you know, in the Psalms, it's, it's Hebrew scripture. So they're talking about Yahweh or Adonai, the, the one that cannot be named, you know, but Lord. And so, um, yeah. but in awe rather than fear is a better. Fear, fear the Lord and, and depart from evil. I don't know, the fear of the Lord depart from evil. I'll have to look that up in my concordance. Which... I used to have a friend who was always quoting that. Huh. I can't. Have to look that one up. I have my concordance here. It wouldn't take me that long, but it, which the cover fell apart on me last night. It's been well used. The concordance, you know, we look up a word like hope. Last night, I think I went to look up pour, you know, the, because the Bishop Curry talked about the Holy Spirit pouring over us. And the baptism today, pour the baptism of water. I actually use a little silver shell today, a little scallop shell. I usually use my hands, but because of the virus, I figured I'd use a dipped little scallop shell in the holy water, in the baptism of water, you know, and bless the bless the child. I did, the, the mother held the child. I, I was as careful as I could with them, of course, as we do these days. So yes, yeah, so the weeds. I'm a gardener, an amateur gardener. Ollie had a one-acre garden down between us and the church down in Delaware, they've turned into a formal garden now. Ours was a, a more natural garden, I guess. We went to our friend Peter and Stacy's house the other day. Connie, you probably went to their garden. They have a garden up a hillside and like nestled in between all these like tall, wild grasses on the other side of the fence. Just a fabulous garden of lilies and all kinds of things. Um, it was really quite dramatic and um, I used to have a nice garden in Somerville before I sold the property. You did? My parents' house. It's a house where I was brought up. Yeah. I was just there uh, after it was sold, and that whole backyard is a mess. It was oh, so much overgrowth, and they yeah. really didn't take care of it. And they rented it out for the, the good money. They refurbished the, the outside of the house, but it's unfortunate they let the backyard go. I know it's sad when gardens it, change. Don't you? I have My to say, dog Coco is buried there. Oh really? Oh yeah. yeah and that, I have an easement to go visit him. Oh, you're doing it nice. That's part of. That's really nice. You're able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. But it's sad people let it go like that because we used to put a hot and soil into it and have a vegetable garden, and we felt very spiritual and connected to God just working in the garden. I understand. We had a lot of animals buried down in our, our three Jack Russell Terriers that we had. And, a beagle terrier mix that we adopted from a woman up the street who couldn't couldn't take her anymore you know couldn't walk her and in, in her older age and all kind of cats indoor cats and homeless cats that we that lived on our porch and we fed um those are some of my saddest funerals because of in, innocent life buried there you know but um of course yeah. It's, yeah so anyways um i um even our luck i think we see our Loving animals again, this, you know, our life is life is energy, and energy can't be destroyed. It's just transformed. So, I always trust. I have dreams about my dogs and everything. I trust that we'll be together again. Now, this oh, well, I talk about gardening. I've always been bad with weeds because if they're flowering weeds, I tend to let them go, and uh, just like this, yeah. just like Jesus said. But then, of course, then weeds can choke out plants, and I was the weed. We never use Roundup or anything in our garden in Delaware or here. We pull the weeds. And I never like using mulch a lot because um, because if you don't use mulch, then the seeds from the other plants will seed. And you'll, you have volunteers and things growing that you never even had to pay for. I miss our garden in Delaware because a lot of people would be either they'd thin their plants out so they give some of their... Two, two women gave us this beautiful... They were one. Was a, had a landscaping business, beautiful colored daylilies, like really gorgeous, exceptional colors. Um, mm. 
and then um, yeah, we had all kinds of things. You know, people had they had moving, so they they split gave us some of their flocks, and then the flocks spread all over the yard. The bees and the the uh, butterflies loved Ollie's garden down there, and uh, now we're, yeah, we're gardening nice. again. So weeds, it's a tough, it's a tough thing to. Well, but, uh, you know, some, actually, actually, some weeds are beautiful, and um, there's a famous garden gardener. Um, he's written a lot about all of his gardens. His name is Beverly Nichols. I don't know if you've ever heard. He was a he was a big friend of Noel Coward's and uh, was a very, 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 very witty man. And he finally, he did so much gardening and became so interested in all of his weeds that he, he decided to have a whole patch of his garden that was nothing but weeds. And he knew that. <laughs> tells you the names of all of them. It's, it's, it's very funny. A weed garden that's sweet. I know, I was just out talking with Vicky. She does a great job on our property, Vicky yeah. and her son Jeffrey. And boy, the Memorial Garden is you know, beautiful with all the different hydrangea, which I just knocked over behind me a minute ago. Uh, but um, the, um, Vicky was saying she, we have that vine that it takes over sometimes, though, but she lets it grow on certain bushes, like you, yeah. you bushes. And then in the fall, it flowers, and the bees love it, and it smells really fragrant. Oh, it's that's sweet. the autumn cle clematis, yeah. It's autumn clematis, yeah. I have to, I've been cutting yeah, it off I some bushes that. because it, it can can weigh the bushes right down, but yeah, we have yeah, it growing on our I've fence. One that comes up underneath my front doorstep. I don't know why, but it grows down there, and it wraps around uh, the entrance. I know, I like the front of your house, Connie. I was, I, Meeple and I sometimes, we take the shortcut and walk up Pine Street and do a smaller circle, and then we see that you have very nice, um, you have the nice front of your house. Connie has a great yeah. door knocker, which is a hand. And so, yeah, it's like, you, so you grab this hand to knock on the yeah. door. It's like, wow, you know. I want to I wanna get one of those, Connie. Oh, That's I wish bit. I was on Nantucket now. I know. Well, Rosemary, next time you'll come out, they won't... We'll have this virus behind us, and you'll be feeling no, better. I, I can come now. I have a house there. There's I know. No reason why I can't come. Well, it's a harder year to, to travel. You know, it's been so hard to get reservations on the ferry. Even if, I know. No, for me it's hard because I need somebody to go with me. Yes, I know I'm, exactly. In the yeah. past, I always just get in the car and go. <laughs> yeah. Ollie's joined us downstairs, maybe for the first time. Uh, Ollie, bring me up a towel when you when you get off. I guess I can wipe it up with my t-shirt. I already did. I spilled the the, the uh, flower water, of course, by in my rocking chair. I I did, I've been um, I I tell you our late night group. We do this, you know, prayers from the attic at eight thirty at night. And so I always wow. say to that group that I want to buy a rocking chair for over at the altar because I rock when we're singing a lot of times with Ada. We sing one hymn, and even during the reading, some I rocks in this rocking chair some. And I like it. I never really liked rocking chairs that much. Oh, that's nice. I like it. Yeah, but it's, it's nice. It's, it's comforting, I think, you know? I miss my porch in Somerville. It's so nice to sit out on the porch and sometimes fall asleep there with a screened in porch. And yeah. And the summer night. Yeah, we're screening in. Down in Delaware, people had um, sleeping porches. You know, where you're usually on the second floor to catch the breeze. That have a porch yeah, with a bed, so a real a bed out there. Yeah. I don't have even a patio here. Nothing. It's a yeah. prison. I feel like a prisoner. We have such bad mosquitoes that we're, we're screening in some of our porch. So, anyways, that's um. What I did, I do have this one book. It's called the um, Synoptic. Here it is. It's Social Science yeah. Commentary, Social Science Commentary on the Synoptic Gospels. It's backwards when I hold it up there. And it's Bruce Molina and Richard Rohrbaugh. Mm -hmm. um, but anyways, that, often I like to look up um, the readings in this too. You know, this is, it's a great tool to see what the context was. This one's kind of an obvious parable because of the, um, the weeds. You know, people can relate to what it's talking about here. And um, so this, this looks like it doesn't give any any proper notes on this. What is it, 13, 24. Yeah, it just talks about um, later in the passage, feuding families. And uh, where are we? Matthew 13. Twenty-four. 
24. Yeah. There's nothing. Oh, it says, parable on a continued and mutual presence of weeds and wheat. So the harvest mentions the man's enemies without explanation. So, so it just talked in this, in this social context is that family's enemies would make varied attempts to dishonor the family. It's really about honor, you know, um, still in the Middle East so, so much, you know, if you dishonor the father, especially, then they punish the family member even rather than the, 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 the punish the victim rather than the perpetrator especially if a woman's attacked or whatever, it's just terrible. Yeah, that's, what, that's what they do in, in the Mideast sometimes. Yeah, they oh, still do. And even in India, yeah. but Af, Af, you hear about it in Afghanistan. Unbelievable. Yeah, no, no, when I, when I think about Afghanistan, not the, you know, the more rural parts of Afghanistan, I think that's how, it, you know, a lot of that's how it definitely was in the time of Jesus. And yeah. so... Well, actually, the English, you, the English used to do that. If one of the maids got pregnant, um, she she she'd be told to leave instead of the son, who would pro was probably responsible. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that they say this. Um... Maybe they, the last part of it that we read might have been a later edition that interpretation. Yeah, it might be a later edition, it says. I don't want to confuse the issue. As Steve Kelly says, sometimes we get stuck too much in the analyzing of it, and then we miss the message, message of the Bible. That's true. And, uh, and so, yeah, so I, again, I'm not gonna be the one that weeds people out, and uh, we let things grow. I, lo I do love farming images and gardening images, of course. Weeds, for me, are problematic, too, in that, um, if it's beautiful, we let it grow. I love the idea of having more natural species too. We have a lot of milkweed, which butterflies love, and I wanted, yeah, you know. They, oh, they do. Yeah, they do. I think it's good they to be. Love yeah, and so, anyways, so our time is just about up. I didn't read the prayer. It's not my favorite prayer for this Sunday, though. But I guess I, I'll read it so we can, I can comment on it, and you can see why I don't like it. And so we're going to do right one this week. Chico. Hi, Chico. Oh, Chico's on the, uh, he's on Zoom, everyone, people that are out in Facebook land. Chico. Say hi, Chico. Hi, Chico. Chico's been to our Blessing of the Animals, huh, Chico? Yeah. What's going on? Oh, he's cute. <laughs> Meatball was up here, but he got, he went back down so he could hope to get doggy treats, probably. That's usually his plan. Thank God for Eric walking him while I'm recovering. Ah, yes, that's for My sure. No, oh, he's cute. I like that painting, too. Um, oh, yeah. That's cool. Okay, so here's the it's proper 11, which is Sunday closest to July 20th. And we're using traditional language because we're using right one this week. The Lord be with you. And with us, Spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, the fountain, fountain of all wisdom, who knowest our necessities before we ask, and our ignorance in asking, have compassion we beseech thee upon our infirmities, and those things for which our unworthiness we dare not, and for our blindness we cannot ask, mercifully give us for the worthiness of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. See, I don't like this one. <laughs> I don't like that prayer because it talks about our unworthiness, our ignorance. It's like, you know, yeah. I, life often will tell us we're unworthy or what a society can tell us that. I know when I was a kid, the church told us that. So I don't like to, I remember this is when I left a clergy group in Delaware. It was this time of year and a, a woman, one of the clergy, she, you know, she had to correct me. Oh no, you, you shouldn't think that that's a, a negative colic. I said, can't I just say how I experienced this? Because of my upbringing, this whole unworthiness thing, I think, is overdone here. And we, you know, we're blind, we're unworthy, we're ignorant. It's like, great. Where's the good news? But I guess the good news is God's mercy and that we are worthy through Christ. Yes, we're all equally loved and 
worthy through Christ, we're set free from Christ. That's part of our faith, so I'll, I'll go with that. Let's say this prayer for another prayer for the day. And I think we'll pray. How about this prayer for joy in God's creation? Since we're talking about gardens and Chico and our and meatball and our animals. And... Can you hear my birds in the background? Oh, and birdie, that's right. I have a cockatiel and the parakeet. Yes, I've met your birds. They hid from me, but I could see them when I was there visiting when you're in Nantucket. Okay, here's this prayer for the joy in God's creation. Oh, Heavenly Father, who hast filled the world with beauty, open our eyes to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, we may learn to serve thee with gladness for the sake of him through whom all things were made. Thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 That's a, that's a wonderful call. It's a nice one, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks for joining us, everyone. And um, we'll, be, we'll be on Facebook Live tonight. We'll be on a morning prayer on Zoom, of course, on Sunday. And thank you, Connie. I'll see you soon. Thank you. Yeah. All right, thank you, Father. All right, thanks a lot. Good seeing you. Bless you. Bless you. We'll see you tonight, too.